we have to look at it for what it is. It's, it's organized crime on a very massive scale. It involves not just the, the wildlife at stake, but the people, the economies, um, and whole regions of the world. Many are surprised to learn that illegal wildlife trade is one of the largest criminal activities in the world. In fact, it ranks among the world's top illegal trades. On the scale of illegal black markets, you know, the usual sorts of things like drugs and human trafficking, wildlife sits at the top five. The value of the black market for illegal wildlife is estimated to be between seven and $10 billion annually. The amount of money that is made by illegal wildlife trade is enormous. I mean, this is not one individual or a few individuals going around killing a few animals, as bad as that would be, and that would be bad. But it is wholesale slaughter of animals. People who conduct, who finance wildlife trade and who are making the big money from it are some of the same people who are involved in the trade in drugs, guns, human trafficking. Also, some of that money is finding its way into the hands of recognized Islamist terrorist organizations that's supporting insurgency. These dangerous organized criminal elements are not just endangering wildlife and worldwide national and regional security. They are also directly threatening the lives of people in the regions in which they operate. You have another type of a poacher, which is quite dangerous now. So they will come in armed uh, looking for a rhino specifically. They normally come in uh, with, obviously they come in with rifles. Um, your AKs. The challenges rangers are facing these days in the field to combat poaching is immense. You're up against criminal gangs who are armed with high-powered rifles. They're armed with night vision scopes, which means they can effectively use the daytime and the nighttime and the rangers are not fully equipped to their standards. We're talking about automatic weapons. We're talking about vehicles on which weapons, heavy weapons are, are mounted. Uh, we're talking about rocket propelled grenades. Basically, war fighting equipment. We are seeing poachers being former soldiers who are trained in actual combat. And this is not a skill normally imparted upon the rangers under ordinary conservation circumstances. So the challenges they are faced is very high. So it's a problem that not only, not only affects the species in the natural world, it, it threatens local communities, which in turn then threatens economies at local and national levels. The kingpins of the wildlife trade feel confident they can continue this violent, destabilizing activity with impunity due to weakly enforced national and international regulations, lack of effective prosecutions, and low penalties. This makes wildlife crime a low-risk, yet high-profit crime. There are laws on the books in a lot of places. They're not getting enforced well. In some places, the laws are not strong enough and they need to be improved. In some places, the laws are strong and countries are trying to enforce them, but the issue is not a high-level political uh, priority, and so they're not getting the support they need politically within their countries to prosecute the crimes. The, the traders, the legal traders, the criminals, they know the loopholes within the law. They know how to circumvent the law to operate the way they're operating. It's enormously destabilizing because these people bribe judges, they bribe border guards, they in some cases bribe rangers, in other cases they bribe villagers to 
let them camp out in these areas. They, in effect, take a slice of a country, a portion of a country, and make it ungovernable for the government of that country. They can't, they don't, they lose control over it. They lose control over their judiciary, lose control over their borders, lose control over their police system because they're bribed. Or if they're not bribed, they're intimidated. So it, it, it undermines the governance process in a lot of countries who are struggling themselves to govern and now they have this additional destabilizing factor. Wildlife crime and the threats and instability it brings is only escalating each year as these criminal activities continue unchecked. To stop this, every country needs to treat wildlife trafficking like the serious crime it is. And we need this to happen fast before the situation gets far worse. You can help us make that happen 